Hello, welcome. Cabbage here. In Near Automata, let's collect all of the Emil scenes together. And I am super glad and lucky that I uh, did it this way. Uh, but I played uh, Near Automata last year, uh, but I skipped pretty much all of the uh, the subquests. I just wanted to look at the uh, the story. And so I didn't really uh, run into Emil at all, except as a uh, shopkeeper. And here he's uh, running around. If we shoot him, he will stop, and then we can uh, buy stuff from him. And I am playing on the uh, the Switch, so that's why I have these uh, exclusives here. <laughs> I did a fashion check earlier. Uh, I'll link to the uh, Near Automata playlist below. Okay, but if we uh, talk to Emil here, he tells us about his house. And then, uh, if we come here to the uh, shopping center, we can find a lunar tier, which we know from Near Replicant. <laughs> and yeah, totally skipped over this mission, so I uh, did that today. Uh, one of the more frustrating things about this game, though, is um, kind of the chapter system and like knowing, you know, which chapter to go into to see or like to start which uh, subquests. Alright, but anyway. Here Emil sees the Lunar Tear and it kind of triggers some memory in him. So it seems at this point that this Emil has lost all memory of the uh, previous uh, whatever was going on. He just remembered the uh, the boar attacking us, which also we know from Replicant. <laughs> and I didn't even play the whole game, just uh, collecting these weapons or these missions here. But even here, I saw a lot of references to Replicant. Alright, so uh, this ML asks us to find more lunar tears. Alright, so the first place was in the uh, the forest zone, so let's look at that. Uh, we can find these, I think, at any time before, but we can't do anything with them until now. Okay, we call Emil over again. <laughs> He's here quick. And he's saying this whole area was once... What? Sand kept expanding and the flowers gradually wilted. So this, I am assuming, is after the events of Replicant. Stop seeing people. And then 9S is like, oh, you mean humans? And then Emil doesn't answer. Uh, because we know that the replicants are not actually humans. They are uh, built. And they're supposed to be there just to be like uh, empty vessels for the actual humans to have their, uh, their sentience, memories, consciousness input into there. So what I'm assuming that Emil was talking about there was after the disappearance of all of the, uh, the replicants. So yeah, thinking about how Emil uh, is here now in the year 11,000. He has been uh, sticking around since the events of Replicant, which is like, uh, what, the year 2000 or something? I fought as hard as I could to save Earth. So yeah, in between the uh, end of Replicant and then um, the time when the aliens came, there was time. 
in between there, but once the aliens came, then Emil took it upon himself to fight them. Super interesting. So yeah, there were wars even before uh, Yorha got started. Alright, next lunar tier here. これは何があったんですか？エイリアンとの戦い。その戦況は。Multiple versions of myself. Aliens just kept coming. So maybe there were still uh, people on Earth when the aliens came, but the aliens wiped them out. That seems to be what he's saying here. And then by aliens, he probably means uh, the uh, the machine life forms that the aliens sent down. Unless there's something there that I'm missing. Okay. This will be the last lunar tier. This one was hard to get to. I'm going to show the entire uh, thing, but we come out of the tunnels underground, out of that uh, kind of fish hook looking one. And then we uh, run up and over here. And then finally we can jump to where the last uh, lunar tier is. But yeah, multiples of Emil, that explains so much. Like in, uh, you know, other near games. Why are there, you know, so many ML heads around? Why are they like weapons that we can use? That kind of thing. And uh, knowing that they were all created by ML himself in order to uh, fight the aliens. Explains that, I think. <laughs> okay, so there I use the full uh, suite of things in order to uh, get myself over that gap and into this little area. I saw a video online where somebody did like the uppercut attack to get over it, but I tried that a little bit, it was too tough, so I went for the uh, the tunnel. Yeah, but seeing Emil here kind of uh, remember. And then me feeling like so much attachment for the character from Replicant really kind of widens the gap in between him and the replicant characters and then 2B and 9S here. Okay, but Emil remembers a special place to him. He must be talking about the protagonist. And he won't tell us any more, <laughs> but he gives us the key. All right, the elevator and the shopping mall. So we'll go back to where we started. But yeah, playing through Automata, this time I was looking at all of the locations and I was wondering, like, is this around where Replicant took place? The, uh, the desert area, yes. We saw, like, the very tippy tops of the, uh, the civilization, the city there. But otherwise I couldn't place it. All right, so we are back at the shopping center. Uh, we got the key. I used the key, but I didn't hit the button. <laughs> so let's hit the button. All right, door opens, and oh my god. <laughs> so Kainu's room is in this game, too. It also appears briefly in uh, Reincarnation. And uh, we get the song there, too. My god. Uh, I got chills. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess all of these lunar tears, this is uh, Emil raising them. 
しても守りたかった大切な思い出の場所ですいえ正確には僕だった人なのですがよくわからないな Then here Emil reveals that this one here is a copy 僕はもともとは大昔に兵器として作られました And I was not expecting this a flashback like a scroll or a storybook talking about his past and yeah looks like he's fighting the aliens uh, one on one so this is before even the creation of the uh, machine life forms and we can see a variety of Emil's back there uh, we saw like Emil's sister had a different kind of a body form Oh, this is wild. Okay, so it's through creating the copies, lost the original memories. An original Emil. So, original Emil, I'm assuming, that's the one that appears in Replicant? who uh, created all of these copies. And then, um, somebody I follow on Twitter, who's very, uh, who's kind of like the number one source for lore on the, uh, the Japanese side, he was wondering after playing uh, Near Reincarnation and then seeing uh, the final reveal of the, uh, the moon base and Pod 006, If the uh, the cage characters were going to uh, go to Earth and meet original Emil, and I was like, "Who's original Emil? What is this?" <laughs> but now, finally, I understand. And now I'm wondering, like, is everybody original Emil? Like, is original Emil working in some kind of uh, capacity in the story of Near Reincarnation? Like uh, the other person on the other side of the chat? Is that Emil? You know? <laughs> Talking to Hina and Yuzuki in their uh, smartphones? Okay, so uh, this copy of Emil, uh, we got him to uh, remember some things. Wild stuff. So, yeah, I guess this is the same area as. Um, the uh, new replicant game. Okay, so uh, before we saw that uh, Emil invited us to his house, so we'll jump into this pipe. And then we'll go through a series of uh, tunnels and dungeons and we'll come across this final door. We'll find where Emil lives. And this music, my god. I just had to stop. <laughs> but yeah, with this, the memories of playing Replicant came back. And um, at the end of Near Automata, somebody asked me, like, did I have a very uh, moving emotional experience playing Automata? And I was like, mm, no, actually, I know a lot of people did, but I didn't. I think it's because I never really connected to the characters of 2B and 9S, especially when compared to how I connected to the protagonist ML and Kaine. Automata, you know, it's very interesting. It's a very thought provoking game. But for me, it feels a little cold, while uh, Replicant felt much more cozy. And so to have, you know, this music here and these characters here uh, show up in Automata was uh, kind of powerful. All 
All right, but let's check out his house. <laughs> Lots of flowers, and then uh, just kind of collections of like our modern day Earth. <laughs> and then here we see a rack of uh, Emil masks. We try to take it, and then the pod uh, warns us. But we'll grab it anyway. <laughs> I haven't tried it yet, but I think it's something that we can wear uh, in the game. Uh, that red tube-looking thing—that's a—that's uh, a mailbox here in Japan. Old school. Uh, I see some like microwaves, maybe vacuum cleaners, computers, <laughs> washing machine. Yeah, relics from Earth. Okay, so that's all we can do for now. Uh, we'll head back to the surface, we'll look for Emil again. So we shoot him again, stop him again. Yeah, and I went through the whole rigor morale of uh, resetting and like moving around places in order to get the, uh, the good version of his shop to appear. <laughs> Alright, and then Emil says, Somebody broke into my home. <laughs> and now he says he's going to put his valuables in a secure container. So what are we going to do? We're going to go back. We're going to break into his secure container. <laughs> so here we are. And then we're playing with a 9S as the lead for a reason. Uh, because uh, we have to hack this chest. So we'll jump in there. And I realize the music is the chiptune version of uh, this replicant song. And so if you'll forgive me, I'm going to go in and hack it multiple times. <laughs> Just so I can hear the other uh, music. But yeah, I have, a, uh, I have the soundtrack CD of the hacking tracks all of the uh, kind of chiptune versions of the uh, Nier Automata songs. Uh, but this song is not on the soundtrack. I suppose if I were a, uh, an insane person, I could just play this, you know, dozens of times, uh, recording the sound each time and then um, go back later and then, you know, cut it up, splice them together and make a, uh, make a track. <laughs> but that would be very tedious, so I'm not going to do that. Maybe I'll look for the, uh, the full thing online somewhere. But yeah, I'm taking damage every time, so I have to uh, heal. But yeah, so good. Okay, here we'll actually beat it. <laughs> okay, so we hack the chest. What do we get? Emil's head. That's my second time playing it, so I can't pick that up. I wanted to go back and record the, uh, the music. <laughs> Okay, we try to exit, and... Oh, Emil shows up again. And he's a secret boss, apparently. <laughs> uh, he's level 99, which is part of the reason why I raised my level to 99. Okay, so we get the ML heads. 
Uh, that's the last weapon that I need to uh, max in order to unlock this next mission. All right, if we go back to the uh, shopping mall, we can see ML standing here in the middle. All right, once again, offers to uh, sell us things. I want to have at least like 20 of everything, so we'll just get some of those. <laughs> Yeah, after we get all the weapons maxed, then he'll say this. Alright, then we gotta head to the, uh, the desert for the final showdown. And uh, this was very useful to have the uh, the animals to ride, especially in the desert. We can go uh, pretty fast. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the boars making an appearance. The ones from Replicant. <laughs> but we come out here to the desert and there are some giant ML heads. That's pretty wild. I think I ran into these in my first playthrough a year ago, but it didn't mean anything to me, so... Promptly forgot about it. Okay, so we meet up with Emil again here. And this is insane. Kind of similar to another uh, boss that we fought in the desert, but uh, it wasn't Emil. <laughs> and I guess this one is uh, magic rather than um, technological. Uh, but yeah, this boss, also very difficult, also level 99. <laughs> and I do not know how anyone could beat this manual play. I had my auto chips off. Uh, but yeah, with the auto chips on, I can do the auto evade and so save myself a lot of damage. And even then, I'm going to get hit and take damage and have to heal. And then I don't realize this for a little while, but uh, each head has a, a life bar. And then once it gets to uh, zero, then uh, we got to move on to the next. But I spent too much time just attacking this one guy. So yeah, the uh, the ML in the truck is explaining to us like um, like what happened to these uh, ML heads. Too many years, too many copies, lost their sense of self, went crazy basically. All right, and then if we take down enough of the heads, we'll start singing. <laughs> That's not creepy. But this is a crazy boss. Lots of targets, lots of uh, damage coming at us. Pretty epic. All right, and here, I think I've got them all. And then here the heads are like, right. We're fighting forever, we are suffering forever. And yeah, that's insane. 10,000 years, maybe? Nothing of value. The world had no meaning. There's a bit of uh, philosophical thought in there. I will get back to making philosophy videos about Nier Automata. To tell the truth, I actually haven't started yet. <laughs> I've done some videos that I kind of consider uh, intro videos, kind of um, 
low-hanging fruit or introducing the concept of philosophy, but still haven't really applied it. And uh, yeah, meaning of life is something that we can uh, talk about. Touched on here by Emil. Okay, then here we get a uh, get a connection, and I want to say that this is original Emil contacting us, talking about you know his friends and how they never gave up, Kaine and the protagonist, and then that was why Emil never gave up. But yeah, kind of a similar message to the end of Replicant, where. This is the world that we choose, therefore, it is worth saving. Alright, time until Emil self-destructs, and I'm like, oh my god, run away! <laughs> and then instead we get an alternate ending, kind of a joke ending. Uh, all of the Emils exploded, killing all life on uh, the planet Earth, I guess. <laughs> And yeah, we got the credits, yes. And uh, why ending? Uh, but actually, I guess that's kind of lucky that I got that, because that's the only uh, sort of alternate ending that is missable. So yeah, we'll go back in, and this time we will uh, destroy the last ML head. I was wondering if the pod was going to be enough for that, but yes, thank god. <laughs> So this copy of Emil kind of remembers, you know, a lot of, uh, or a lot of the most important things that the original Emil had. And so actually, we never meet original Emil during the course of this game. So he's still out there somewhere. And it would be so, so cool if he did appear in reincarnation at some point. And now, knowing all of this stuff, it seems likely. Emil's kind of going to be the thread that uh, connects all of these games together. Or a thread. There are multiple. Oh my god. <laughs> so, that's the end of that. For me, that's the true ending there. <laughs> but it was so cool to get like so much of Replicant in this game. But yeah, if I had played all of that, you know, my first playthrough of Automata before having played Replicant, I don't know, it wouldn't have had nearly the effect, so again, I'm really glad that I played it in this order. And there's Kaine's room, and now I know why it's on the main screen. That's crazy. Uh, I want to make one last video about Automata, collecting all of the stuff about Devola and Popola, kind of in a uh, style similar to this. And after that, then I will uh, turn comments on for all of my uh, Near Replicant and Near Automata videos. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again. Take care.